Hey guys, welcome to my video on calculating consumer and producer surplus. In my previous videos, I showed you what consumer and producer surplus is, but I never had any numbers to help you with an actual calculation. So here is uh, something you might encounter while studying your microeconomics. You might get a well-labeled graph where you know that consumer surplus is this area below the demand curve and above the price. And that producer surplus is this area beneath the price and above the supply curve. But I'm going to be interested in this video in how do you calculate for the actual values. If we quantify it, then we can make concrete judgments about what this market is doing. So we know that these are areas between these curves. So I'm going to let you in on a little secret, which is the formula for the area of a triangle equal to one half or 0 0.5 times the base times the height of the triangle. So in the case of consumer surplus, as the consumer surplus would be the area of that red triangle. Well, how wide is it? What is its base? It's going to be 120 quantity across. That's the quantity that our consumers are buying. And how tall is it? Well, it's 200 minus 140 dollars high and I can rewrite this as being 0 0.5 times 120 times 60 which comes out to be thirty six hundred dollars so I can actually get a dollar measurement for my consumer surplus uh, yeah so that's pretty much all it is area of a triangle well what about producer surplus producer surplus would be one half times the base, which is the same base, because they're in equilibrium and they have the same quantity, times the height. See that triangle that goes from 140 all the way down to 20. And so that means it equals 0 0.5 times 120 times 120, which means this triangle is equal to $7,200 which then of course I can say total surplus is equal to consumer surplus plus producer surplus is equal to uh, $10,800. All right, so there's the easy version. If our market's in equilibrium, you just have two easy triangles and no big deal. Well, what if I introduce a price floor of $100? So we're no longer going to be thinking of this equilibrium price of 140. We can just ignore that for now. Uh, and so I'm looking at this graph with a same supply and demand, but now we limit the price. At the price of 100, the quantity supplied is 80. There will be 80 transactions in the market. If there's only 80 transactions in the market, the demanders are willing to pay $160 for their good. Uh, but since the price is limited, they don't have to. And so for everything between $160 and $100, consumer surplus isn't actually a triangle. It's going to be this area in here is a rectangle. There is a triangle piece up here. And so the fact that there's both kind of complicates the actual solving of it. But we'll get to it. And producer surplus, that's a nice simple triangle. So I want to talk about consumer surplus now. The consumer surplus is going to equal the area of the triangle piece plus the area of the rectangle piece. And so we're going to calculate those separately. But first, let's take a quick look at the triangle. The triangle itself, I'm going to put in some numbers on it to help us know how big it is. Its top point is at $200. Its bottom is at $160. It is $40 high, 200 minus 160. From left to right, it goes from zero all the way over to a quantity of 80. That's how big the triangle is. What about the rectangle? The rectangle picks up where the triangle left off at 160 and goes all the way down to the price ceiling of 100. And then on the quantity axis, it goes from zero over to 80. 
And so if I want to solve for consumer surplus, I'm going to have to solve for both of those areas and add them together. Side note, there is also a formula for a trapezoid. I don't usually bother teaching it to my students because this way will help us out later if there's like a tax or anything. And even if there's not, it's just less to memorize. So anyway, consumer surplus. You go to the area of the triangle, which is one half times the base, 80, times the height, 200 minus 160 is 40. There's a triangle component. Plus the area of the rectangle, there's no one half. It's just base times height. So it's 80 wide and it's 60 high, 160 minus 100. Add those all up together and you're gonna get $6,400. That's your consumer surplus. Producer surplus is still easy like before. It's just a simple triangle, 0.5 times the base, which is 80, times the height, which is 80, is gonna have to be 3,200, which means that total surplus is 6,400 plus 3,200, which is 9,600. Now, you might have noticed that the total surplus has gone down. It was 10,800, now it's 9,600. It's gone down by $1,200. That's because this area is called deadweight loss. That is surplus that does not get generated because there was no transaction. Those 40 transactions disappeared when we changed the price. So one way to calculate total surplus is to calculate it before, sorry, one way to calculate deadweight loss is to calculate total surplus before and total surplus after and find the difference. The other is just with the area of a triangle. Deadweight loss is equal to one half times the base of it, which is 120 minus 80, those 40 transactions we lost, times the height of it. Well, the height is this wedge. It goes from 160 down to 100. And thus the deadweight loss is going to equal 0 0.5 times 40 times 60, $1,200. So, um, I know I didn't do one for a price floor. You'll be fine. It's still triangles and rectangles. I like to draw the picture first to make sure I know what it is I'm trying to measure, and then you can add up whatever components you need. I hope this was helpful to you. If not, too bad. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Good luck, and happy econing.